Welcome back guys, what's the crack? Using the Rafina power float here uh, Cordless cement plastering finishing machine And just sort of talk you through a few things here How we're getting on and the tactics we're using So the methods and tactics we are using here is this block wall has originally been first coated with satin cement, a scratch coat, and then we have coated this and straightened it and a few days later. We've left it open. Usually if I was going to actually leave a wall this long, I would sort of somewhat rule it in, close it in, spatula it in leave it a wee bit more closed in on the surface and that would allow my render to stay wetter for longer but on um, this occasion we're going to be using this Rafina power float here and the reason being is that it's not that it's a big wall but it's a nice wall to be able to test it out on and worst comes to worst you can always grab my trusty float and sponge and get it finished the old way but as you can see here now i would actually struggle at this point to get a good finish on this wall without having to actually soak it and i mean properly soak this wall down as it has dried very firm to the touch almost would feel like floor screed on the wall at this moment and you can see how well the power floats actually handling that it's getting it in quite well you can see it's bringing the moisture up the surface and I haven't added any any water to the surface just gone straight on with the Rafina float itself the I think it's like a diamond tipped pad um, and that just means there's, there's be diamonds in the, the plastic but the more I use this power float the more impressed I become and really the better I get at handling it and the more I learn about it myself as I do have two previous videos on this plus an unboxing so I have initial thoughts with the unboxing and then the first time I tried to do it was in winter when it's quite wet and I know guys the guys swear blind that they can get it all rubbed in good but I'm not just at that level yet myself but what I have found in the summer there when we give it a good go have another power float video that letting it dry and pulling this bad boy out is pretty pretty good way to go about things guys it would almost make you think you could get a, a full gable rubbed yourself no problem in warmer weather now at the near the end of this video i will have the the specs on the batteries for you and what i mean by that is i'll tell you exactly how much power on the battery this wall took on the two passes i'm gonna give it the float pass and then i'm gonna give it the sponge pass so i'll be able to show you how many batteries it took how many bars it took and let you know the stats on that so there's no time given between the float and the sponge here i literally swap the blades over and get straight back onto it so there's you know User watching the real time of me finishing this wall. This is giving you the exact finishing of this wall from from the power float, which I think it's going to be probably about really probably about 13 odd minutes in total. But yes, I do touch up my corners slightly with the the float and the the sponge float also, and the only reason for that is is that up in the one of these tops here well this top needed cut off straight as I'm working up to a wood and we're cutting it off straight you'll probably just notice it in this clip that there's a timber running all the way along so we're up slightly onto that but at the end I do cut that all off as well but there's also metal straps and I didn't really want to catch the, f the float this this float off the metal strap so I would have rather just go around it but they were literally just quick touch-ups and I'll show you is when we do have this wall all sponged in with the power float, how it looks and whether or not you would think it would be acceptable or not. 
personally think myself just just the hand is slightly tidier just a wee bit tidier looking and basically but then that might be just what I'm used to you know, I'm used to it finished that way so it's just the way you sort of slightly see the grains on the sand cement being rubbed but um, I can tell you now this wall at this rate here I would never not at this speed and definitely with not this minimum effort would I have caught this wall and um, so that's that is definitely a big food for thought not saying it's a huge wall but it's not a small one either so um, it is things to think about guys there and obviously the battery power will give you you know indication of how far two batteries or three or four batteries would go with without you know if you're on site you might not have power to charge them so you know and you might not want to use your generator to charge these batteries I have been told uh, I think these lithium batteries that they do charge okay on generators but I've also been told not to do it and um, if there's any guys in there that know all about batteries and all about electrics and stuff let me know in the comments which 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 story is right is the story where you know generators being up and down voltage wreck these types of batteries or do these types of batteries not be influenced by voltage going up and down so i'd love to hear the answer to that question so hit me up in them comments guys it'll really help me out going forward but so yeah you can see the way i sort of went here and um, it kind of does look like i was jumping left to right on the wall and um, the reason for that was of just trying to get the drier areas first and you know not always where you start coating will be the driest area so you know just sort of going left and right making sure it gets sort of it all closed in as much as possible so the other questions i have been getting on the power float is can you go straight on with the sponge I wouldn't have thought so with this wall being the way I left it so open and let it get so dry I wouldn't have really thought so but I think when I get the sponge on it you'll be quite impressed of the actual speed of what it took to, s to finish it with the sponge on um, which is, pre is pretty good so what, what else do we need to know about this power float basically if you're going to get one I do think the cordless one is better because I'm able to just whip across this wall left and right and I think a wire would really hinder me I think a wire on this this float would really really slow me down it would be I could potentially trip over it and stuff and um, again another slats guy is getting on well with the power float and I think that's brilliant but um, with the lead but I do think this this battery power is sort of the way to go it is the future battery power drills and battery power float now this is definitely it seems to be the future of plastering but again guys let me know your thoughts or what what you've been using and getting on well in with in the comments I'd love love to hear all all the sort of scenarios and stuff so that's the wall all floated with the plastic blade and knife for the sponge I can tell you one thing that could be improved is if we could get a I think the Falco's been holding them on I really really do but getting that plastic float off you need some amount of muscles and sometimes I, I nearly lack that guys sometimes I really struggle to get it off um, but I always find the sponge easy to get off and on um, but the float one it fits so well on that it's hard to get it off the velcro and like velcro is strong when it's attached well and if you don't believe me check out the, the video where i actually use velcro on my strap my stilts on my straps and it holds me quite well and i feel safe and comfortable using the the stilts straps with velcro and um, so it, i know it's strong but i think it's just the design of the float um thinking is there a better way or better attachment that could be used with that um not not sure maybe a thicker float that comes out a bit more might be easier obviously you can't have anything sticking out of these things when they're spinning around because it would be a wee bit deadly but yeah so this is the sponge attachment on and away we go and you can see 
I'm, I'm giving it a really, really good close in with both the float and the sponge. I think if I wanted, I could have nipped over the wall actually even quicker with the float and then let the sponge do the rest. Now, basically, again, I will touch up the this top here, uh, as I said earlier, as I need to cut it anyway, as you can see. And also one of them metal brackets, the, the what holds the roof on. It's a, a wall tie comes down, and it's, I forget the name of them, but basically, it was still sticking out a wee bit, and I didn't want to, especially did not want to rip my float attachment, or the sponge attachment on it, otherwise the float would be no good for finishing. So, basically getting, I'm getting tons of questions about this power float, so I'm going to keep on going with it and improving with it, and also hoping I can get a few more of these videos rattled out for you and let you know further thoughts, but basically, you know, are you guys actually thinking of getting these? Um, what's your thoughts on them that way? Um, still maybe a bit pricey? Or is have you got enough work lined up, big gables, that you're going to constantly be needing it, you know? Um, and just because you use this on the wall doesn't mean you still can't use your float and hand sponge, the car sponge, your sponge float. You can still do all those things. Just because you power float it doesn't, doesn't mean you can't then... You know, doesn't mean you can't power float the top with strain and hand finish it with a sponge float and then when the st you know when you get down to the bottom sort of three four foot where it's a bit wetter you know and you're afraid to go with the power float as i would recommend then you still can hit it with your hand float there's not an issue there and finish it as you would you know it won't make the wall look any different and you will see this towards the end here of what i'm talking about and actually you can see beads on this job as well if anybody's interested in having some videos hopefully coming up on beading for render and obviously i'll try and knock a few more out this year coming with the skimming beads but basically this wall's handy in the fact i don't need a crate the last wall I did i needed a crate to get up it was just a wee bit too high and i'm finding it quite easy to handle the 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 power float up that high as well and it really has just just rubbed this wall in so quick with the sponge float and um, it's sort of you can sort of see the shape of the sponge there the way because i'm turning it now obviously you can go up and down up and down but you'll still have to me this is the best way to go i'm, I'm enjoying sort of moving it round and round and um, sort of going with the spin of the float and that just going up and down as then you might have just one big line going straight across where you stop so i think that's the way i'm going here is working beautifully and you can see the the next wall that we hit here with the lovely scratch code in it and notice how there's no block lines showing through there guys through the scratch code so the fact that it's not showing through the scratch code even would tell you a big story that it hasn't a chance of coming through my second coat, my top coat, so again, they'll be on future videos for sure, how, how to sort of counteract certain things and what people are possibly doing wrong for that to have happened, but again guys, that's it, just time to wash up now on my sponge float. And they do take a bit of time to wash, but here you go. So, at that wall, there's only one bar left from past it with the, the sponge float and the, the plastic float as well. And in that time, the other battery fully charged. So, by the time that would run out, that would be charged, just if anybody wants to know.